Here she go. Here she go. I, here she go. Woo, I'm speechless because she came back and, and you, bitch, stop. Just stop. I'm out. I'm done. You're out of it. <laughs> I am on the formation tour. Who can go on a world tour without a new album? Bad bitch. Malaysia and Virgin Hair, Wendy Lace front wig, and scalp a bitch with no charges. Bad bitch be. Look when is back. And look what the f*** happening. Like, I just can't take it. You don't have to have 13 million subscribers to be noticed for your talent and people to believe in you. And she's, I just love her. I love her so much. She is literally my life. Bitch, if you see this, because I know you watch, call me. <laughs> you have my number, girl. It happened, you guys. It happened, and I met Beyonce. <laughs> I can't believe. I never thought I would make this video. I honestly thought that I would be making this video or even saying anything about this happening. Like when, like years down the line, when she's like retired and like, <laughs> or like you know, I don't know. I just I never thought that this would be happening right now. I know how much I've been with Parkwood and they've been looking out and I've had partnerships and everything and I've went to every concert, you know, ever since formation and she's flown me out and everything. But I thought that was because of like marketing, PR, team. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you saw me, maybe your team saw me on social media so they want to make sure like I keep talking. You know, I thought that was the case. I'm here to tell y'all on this day that that is not the case at all. We really have a a very big mutual respect and love for one another. And I don't even know my life right now. <laughs> like, I'm trying not to freak out. I feel like I could freak out with y'all because we could talk. You know what I mean? I know, Beyonce, hey, B, I know you watching in the back, very, very back, with a cloak on. Bitch, I know you watching. I love you, girl. I know everybody at Parkwood, I love y'all too. My family at Parkwood, I love y'all down. I want to also shout out the Waco Theater. The reason why I even met Beyonce was because I went to the Wearable Art Gala. Um, it is a wonderful gala to support the Waco Theater, which is uh, where art can occur. This is not a brand deal, by the way. I'm not getting paid to say this, but I want to say this because this event, one, changed my life. Two, uh, this event also showed me the power of community, believing in children, believing in the black youth. So I want to just leave a link in the description below. If you guys want to donate to the Waco Theater, please do so in the link in the description below. The Rebel Art Gala is a gala by Mr. and Mrs. Lawson, and I got to meet them. And it was just like a beautiful event to see. I see these kids that some were only reading at a you know second grade level and now writing poetry. Like just Tina's Angels. Like it's just it's so it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful foundation. And it's a very beautiful thing that the Knowles Lawson and Carter family is doing. It's actually really, really gorgeous. So I just wanted to give that a shout out because that was the reason why I was even there. Um, on top of meeting Beyonce. <laughs> but the main reason was for the kids and for the Waco Theater. And we need things like the Waco Theater. You need we need outlets, especially being a black creative. Uh, when I was a kid, I was in theater, and I had the pleasure of uh, performing with Anita Baker when I was a, in, when I was in uh, show choir. Uh, so I know the outlet is needed for that. So I just want to give a, sh a quick shout out to that before we got into the video. But it's not a brand deal, so don't fast forward. It wasn't a brand deal. Just want to show my respects. Um, but the tea. Let's talk. So let me tell you how this all happened. <laughs> So I went to this, uh, I went to the Wearable Art Gala, right? I got an invitation, which, shout out to my family at Meta. Meta, I love you so much. We the culture, I love y'all down. Uh, we the culture, I ride for y'all forever. Um, they had a table at the Wearable Art Gala, and they asked me if I wanted to go, which I gagged, because I said, like, the same Wearable Art Gala, like, Miss Tina Wearable Art Gala? Oh, girl, absolutely. So it was a blessing that they even got me in and they got my name approved on the list. I was like, wait, what? They let me in? Um, so that's how I got to go. Get to the Rebel Art Gala. The theme was Harlem Nights, 1920s to 1940s, 50s. Um, so I was in my gig, honey. You know, I had my top hat, I had my blazer. I felt like straight out the 1920s, 30s, but I said, make it queer. <laughs> how can I be extra? <laughs> Uh, so I got my whole, I got my, I got my suit and I went to the gala and, um, as I get there, I'm nervous because my boyfriend couldn't come, unfortunately, uh, cause it was no plus ones. And I was like, wait, ah, he, ah okay. This is nerve wracking. I get there, I get on the carpet. Uh, I see my friend Kaylin who was there on the carpet, which I, my girl, we met her together, by the way, finally, um, we get there, get on the carpet. 
I'm looking around like a lost puppy girl. I don't know nobody in here. I'm seeing every celebrity, every actor, every billionaire you can think of. By the way, Jeff Bezos was there, girl, and I had to say hi. <laughs> I just have to go back and say hi. I said, girl, oh my God, like this is, hello? Like, where am I? Am, am I in this room? Little old YouTube boy from Detroit in this room. That's why this was such a big deal. Besides meeting Beyonce, by the way, I'm in a room with people that's changed the world, okay? Actors that accolade, like, you know what I'm saying? I got to an interview Angela Bassett. I didn't say her name like that, even though it was Angela Bassett. I'd be saying Angela Bassett, you know what I mean? I got to interview Angela Bassett. She was getting honored that night. Insane, like, and, 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 and Miss Angela changed my whole entire life when it came to acting with what, what what's, with what's love got to do with it. So I'm already, that, that was like, I'm already on cloud nine. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then I see uh, one of my favorite people in the whole entire industry, uh, Yvette Noel Shore. If you do not know her, she is Beyonce's publicist. Um, we have been, this has been one of my mentors, one of my people I call uh, damn near family. <laughs> damn near family, because this woman is so impossible to get in touch with, but I can just call her if I need advice like that. And that's such a blessing, not a flex, just a blessing. She's been with Beyonce since Destiny's Child. Like this is, they're, you know, they're like two, th two peas in a pot. And I, we've been talking since the Formation World Tour. And so she didn't know I was gonna be there. So when I saw her on the carpet, we gagged, hugged each other out. Love to see her there. And I'm like, oh, so Beyonce's gonna be here. In addition to Chloe and Hallie is here. So I know B's gonna be coming. I had no idea how I was gonna meet Beyonce. But I said, before I got to this event, and my boyfriend hit me, I love him so much. He called me, well, he sent me a text message and was like, hey babe, I do, I wanna tell you this, I know for a fact you're gonna meet Beyonce. He's like, I feel it in my gut, you're gonna meet Beyonce. I'm like, oh, don't put too much pressure on it because what if it don't happen and I'm gonna, be leave, I'm gonna leave this this place really, really sad. <laughs> I walking around the event, by the way, shout out to my girl Dolce. So me and Dolce were gagging, honey, together because we both look around with like lost puppies, right? So Dolce is there and I said, is that Dolce? She looking fabulous, honey. And we looked gorgeous, honey. And so I walk up to Dolce, so she was like, oh my God. So this is our first time meeting in person, but we talked, you know, online and stuff and we text, but never met her in person yet. So she's like, oh my God, you're here. I'm like, yeah, bitch, you're here. Hey girl, oh my God. So me and her are having a moment, girl. And we're like, okay, finally, we got somebody, friends. <laughs> like we got somebody we know in this crazy rich ass event. You know what I'm saying? So me and Dolce walking around and then my girl, um, Young Baby Tate got there too. Shout out to my girl, Young Baby Tate. She got there. So we all, we kiki and drinking, eating food. Um, we got a chance to walk around and be cute. And I had to break away from them because I had to go to the red carpet again to interview Angela Bassett. That was our night. Happy that I had my girl Dolce and Young Baby Tate. Shout out to my, my, to my two queens. Love y'all down. Um, can't wait for that game night, girls. Mm -hmm. The night goes on. The dinner is over. It's like three section in this gala. Like, it's like you walk through the art gala, then you walk through like this reception area where it's like themed and stuff. And then you go into the actual gala itself to sit down at your table that's designated for you. My friend Kayla, who also did the carpet, was like, girl, Beyonce just walked in, girl. So I just see Julius and I see security walking a blonde wig <laughs> down the aisle. And so I said, oh, this is my time. I get up, girl. I don't know what got into me. I don't know if it was God pushing me. I don't know what courage I had because I could have gotten punched in the face. But I said, you know what? Before I got here, like I said, my, I was talking to my boyfriend. I said, if, if I am in the same room as this woman, I cannot leave this space without saying at least hi. You know, like I can't at least hi. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I would be like Raven. I'll be like that's a Raven girl. I'll be in the vents and fall through the vents and fall on her table. Girl, like it will give that if I have to, honey. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yes, so she's coming through the aisle. I get up, me and Kaylin. So they walking, they walking swiftly, honey. So I had to walk swiftly, girl. And I was like, Kaylin was like, wait, no, Zach, don't go because you can't just walk up to her. Cause like, then they gonna punch you in the face. You know, girl, that's just a no, no in this industry. But something told me in my spirit, I said, Kaylin, girl, this has to happen. I said, I know she knows me. I know she knows my face. I feel like when she sees me, girl, all this security stuff is going to be dead. So I walk up. She's hugging people, she's greeting people. As I get closer, my heart's beating out my chest. However, comma, there's a calmness that came over me. And I know a lot of people are hitting me up like, how was he so calm? I would've peed myself out of da 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 da. You know what it is, can I be honest with you? I have had the pleasure of meeting one of my favorite people also in this world, which is Gaga, and had an intimate moment with her, twice actually. 
And meeting these people that you idolize reminds you that they're human. Does that make sense? And I feel like what's in their face, all that like hoopla, the fanatry, of course you love this person, but because we've interacted online and the support has been back and forth, it has not been just me standing, 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 and then never got, you know, at least recognized or any presents, gifts. Both of these ladies have always extended themselves to me. And that's not a flex again, also a blessing. And it all hits me like that. It's, I'm like, wait a minute. This woman knows me. She loves me. At least that's what I think through, you know, a team and stuff like that. I'm like, she loves me, right? So that kind of gives me the confidence to be like, hey, Bia, whatever, whatever. All I had to do was walk up to my girl. She's hugging, kissing. And as she's hugging somebody, she sees me pass. You know when you're hugging somebody, you can kind of see past. She's hugging somebody and she sees, sees past. And <laughs> I could almost cry. Oh, f I can almost cry, but I'm not. Mm, oh, I'm about to cry. No, I said I wasn't gonna cry. I said I wasn't gonna cry in this video. I said I wasn't gonna cry in this video. Cause I haven't cried yet. I haven't cried yet. I've been taking days to record this cause I've been like trying to make sure it was real. <laughs> um, but she sees my face, we lock eyes. And she literally says, and I'll never forget the expression. She said, oh, oh. And she gets to, thank you, good to meet you, good to meet you. Ah, uh, comes open arms, just coming straight to me like this. And we just immediately embrace. Oh, the hug lasted. We, mm, girl, we mwah, mwah, hug. My brain still has wrapped around like this is the woman that I've been growing up since I was like, literally in like sixth, fifth grade. You know what I'm like, like, come on now. Pause the story. My inner child had to realize this was the woman that if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be on stage. I wouldn't be making music. I wouldn't even be making YouTube videos. I wouldn't entertain people. I wouldn't find that inner, you know, thing that makes me love entertaining people. It was because of this woman. And all of that, my inner child just sat there and cried. But my adult self was keeping it very sickening, okay? Par. And she says hi to Kaylin, and I'm happy Kaylin came over, because if Kaylin did not come over with me, he would have missed his chance. I told my girl, come your ass on, girl. So he comes over, he, she says hi to him, gives him a hug, and she tells us, I love y'all so much. First of all, she tells me I look handsome. Uh -huh. That was the first thing she said. She said, oh my God, you look so handsome. I said, oh my God, thank you, I put it together, girl. You know, I can clean up very well. And she's like, I just want to thank y'all so much for holding it down. Like, I love y'all so much. Like, you know, you guys, like, y'all, y'all, you ride hard for me. Like, she was, like, very emotional. Like, I, thank you so much for riding hard for me. And the picture subject comes up. So I'm like, okay, let's take a picture. Oh, my God. She said, okay, I would love that. One second. I want to have my photographer take it. And I promise you guys will get it. And I was cool. I'm like, okay, fine. That's beautiful enough for me. But she's like, honey. Let me go sit down, because I just got here, and everybody come to say hi. I want to sit down first, and then, you know, we can we take our picture. We, 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 after the gala's over, we'll reconvene. Beautiful. That's the video that you've seen when I gave her one more kiss and a hug, and I walked back to my table. That's that video. And I was like, okay, girl, okay. So I'm at, I'm at my table, enjoying the gala, enjoying uh, Mama Tina and her husband, Richard, just enjoying them on stage, the, <laughs> the foolery. And the knowledge that they gave was amazing. And seeing Miss Bassett uh, get, you know, honored and seeing Chloe and Hallie perform for Miss Bassett, um, seeing the, uh, the kids that they helped for the Waco Theater get, you know, honored and seeing the art get sold and people auctioning, these rich people up here auctioning. I said, ooh, girl, 50000 now. Oh, I'm not there yet, Jesus, but I'm almost, you know? And so the, the gala's over, okay? And after all that, the gala's over. So, baby... I make my way back to her table, because I have to go. Now at this point, unfortunately, Kalen had to catch his flight back to New York, because he's in Juilliard, so honey, he couldn't miss his class. So I told about, I tried to persuade him, like, girl, you should miss that flight. My baby said, I, I gotta go. So it was just me, I'm alone now. I said, oh God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But I said, I'm gonna have to go for it, girl, because this is it. And I, I make my way back over to Beyonce and her table. And they're all talking and whatever. She's doing her goodbye kisses and stuff. But honey, at this point, security is getting her out the room, honey. Girl, they brisk. Like, Beyonce, let me tell you something. I love my girl so much because 
I, you think the president is protected. No, Beyonce's protected on a whole other level. Like, you protect it, girl. <laughs> I live for it, I live. But once again, as security is denying access to her because people are trying to rush and say hi, because you know, this is the only time probably you get to see her. As I come over there, security lets me in the barricade. And when I say barricade, I mean the barricade of security that's like protecting the Carters and getting them backstage. But they let me in. And Beyonce pointed at me and was like, make sure he gets back. You come with me. So now I'm I'm on Beyonce's coattail. Like, what is happening? Like, what is my life? What is my life? Oh, <laughs> I'm gagging. Cause like, I, you should like, oh. Somebody has a video of that actually where I was on Beyonce's coattail, where like she was like security saying, move, 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 but then they let me in, girl. So I'm just right here with Blue and, and B, and we just stream you all the way backstage, girl. But she made sure, and that's when I knew, before I tell you the rest of the story, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna give you all the full detail. That's when I knew that she loved me on a different level. And she loved me, respected me, and we cherish each other. You know what I mean? It's not a one way street because she very much, very much could have gave, it was nice to meet you. <laughs> Goodbye. And you know, and I would have been fine. I would have been fine, girl. I would have been like, all right, well, that's that. Thank you, Jesus. All right, thank you, God. Thank you, God. But she, it was like, no, 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 no. Make sure he makes it backstage too. And actually, matter of fact, you come with me. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, that's my bitch. That's my bitch. <laughs> I love you, girl. So we go backstage. She take a picture with maybe like two or two, two people, it was very restrictive. She took a picture, I think, with somebody that may pay the highest bill for her tour next year and to get tickets and backstage pass. And then some, somebody, it was like a few other people that won things and betted and stuff. And that was it. And it was my turn. She says, come on, come on through. Let me tell you what happened. I get back here. Now, I say, Beyonce, where's your photographer? The photographer's nowhere to be found. Do you know what happens? My phone was on 5%, y'all. I turned my phone off during the gala because I said, I need to save this battery for some reason. I just need to, something told me, something in my spirit said, save your battery. And I'm so happy I did. I turned my phone on as soon as she told me to come here. Because I'm like, the Apple logo coming up. I'm like, girl, hurry up, hurry up. Honey, she tells Blue, Blue, do you mind, she asks, I'm sorry, she asks Blue, do you mind taking the picture? Blue says, I got it, I got it, I'll take it. What is happening right now? <laughs> wait, I said, wait a minute. Like, okay, like B, like Carter's, hey, hey my, my Carter family, I love y'all. I wanted to meet Sean, um, Jay-Z too. <laughs> Sean, who am I? <laughs> I wanted to meet Jay-Z too, but I think he was talking to somebody else. Um, but Blue and B was, is enough. <laughs> Blue, first of all, when I say sweet, is, is an understatement. When I say well-mannered, is an understatement. When I say intelligent, is an understatement. I have never met what she's 11, 12 year old that had so much coof. <laughs> oh, you, I say you rich. <laughs> the blue, you so rich, girl, you so rich. Just coof, like so well-mannered, so beautiful, just, just kind, like, Cause you know, I, you, you know how these Hollywood kids could be so like rude and ugh, ugh. You know, like my mom's Beyonce girl, like, oh, who are you, baby? I don't know. I don't know if she knew who I was because of YouTube. I don't know because she be watching my because B watched my videos at home. I don't know, but the way she was just so kind and beautiful and like, I got you. Let's do this. So she takes my phone. Blue has my phone. This cell phone, this cracked ass phone. Blue had it, right? And she just flicking it up, girl. Just, I'm like, oh my god, I'm <laughs> beautiful. And now Blue holds my phone for a while because me and B just get to talking. And I don't want to say everything because I want to hold a lot of things cherished to me. But the, the, the scale of everything that we talked about was formation. And one of the main things that stuck out to me uh, that I do want to share was I, I thanked her in person finally about formation, because that was just a pivotal point in my life, in my career, and my, some of you wouldn't even know me if it wasn't for that moment in time. And she stopped me in my tracks as I was trying to give her all this praise. And she said, no, 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 no. She said, it's not, I didn't do anything for you. I said, well, in my mind, yes you did, bitch, if I wasn't, <laughs> yes you did. But she said, it was you, it's your hard work.
Oh God. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That. That was enough. I don't. I still don't know how I kept. I just kept very cool from that. I mean, I'm just you know having a like just casually up here talking to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just up here casually talking to be about other shit and you know just and how influential influential her her husband is and behind the scenes and things. That part of the conversation alone was enough for me to go home and almost get rid of any insecurities I've ever had, any no's I've ever gotten, any you're not worth it, you're not thin enough, you can't sing good enough, you can't dance good enough, um, you won't make it past Detroit, uh, uh, you, will never be a, you won't never be a celebrity or huge. All of those things insecurities and or things that people have said to me when I say out the window because in that very moment I knew that the person that I have looked up to the person that I've made countless videos about on YouTube that has even made my career as far as YouTube gave me the biggest piece of validation I've ever needed in life which was tell to tell me baby I helped but you did the work. And she won't even take, she won't, she said, and I found, she was like, how are you gonna be, you know, how, what did I do? I found you on YouTube. That's what my girl told me. So I, so let me tell you, backstory, Formation World Tour comes around. That's how I got on, you, uh, got on the tour because her team had told me that she found me on YouTube, but I thought that was just to make me sign the papers. <laughs> I thought that was just, you know, I, I I went along with it. I thought it was just to be like, so they could be like, oh, he gonna sign because if you heard Beyonce said, but well, she wanted you, you know, you gonna sign the paper. Nah, baby, it was it was very very one hundred percent true. My baby found me on YouTube herself. She always watching. Love you, girl. I said, you know what? <laughs> this also lets me know. This also just lets me know. My message on YouTube has come across clear. I know that a lot of people like to try to flip narratives on me because I'm not a problematic person on the internet. You will never get me, see me getting into it with somebody on the internet. I don't have time for that, girl. I don't get into that. I don't beef with nobody. Um, that's not my thing. Uh, people think my, I know when people try to flip my criticism to being shady or to almost say your criticism, who are you, girl? And into, and, and to that, I'd be like, I agree, because who am I, right? But now, but now, and I'm not saying this in a cocky way. I'm just saying this in a very confident way. Now, it lets me know that my career and what I've been doing, because my baby's been keeping up, that I'm doing the right thing. I'm on the right track. I was born this way, I couldn't help myself. But I'm on the right track. I'm gonna continue spreading love, knowledge, my, my opinion about music, because that's what I love. My opinion about pop culture, but I'm also gonna continue music, and entertaining, and performing, and making visuals. I'm so hard on myself. If y'all, people don't, y'all don't know this, but I'm very, very hard on myself when it comes to production, when it comes to creating content, when it comes to music, when it comes to just being the best I can be. I have times like everybody else in this world where you feel like you're not doing enough, or are you impacting? Are you are you important? Just hearing the validation from Beyonce was enough because honestly. I, I, who else do I look up to besides, and I've already got the validation from Gaga. So it was like, my queen though? Legendary, legend, legend, icon. Beyonce? That's enough for me. That's enough for me to carry on for my rest of my career. And I don't know if she knows, I'm telling you now, B, but I don't know if she knows those words meant that much to me because that's enough. I will continue to take that energy that B gave me and to inspire the next black artist. Yeah, that's what it felt. It wasn't, that, that message wasn't just for me. That message was for me to hear, to me to take my career now and to continue to work harder and to be able to inspire other black artists and other artists in general in the world that watch me that feel like they're not, they feel like they're alone or nobody's listening, nobody's watching. I'm watching, I'm here for you. And I'm going to continue to support in any ways that I can. And that's what it's about. That's what it's all about.
some things I don't want to share because I want to keep the experience to myself and my close family and friends, but that's been pretty much the big gist of it. <laughs> and I, I love, I love that family. I love the Carters. I love my Parkwood family. It just, I now know that the respect is very mutual. And Beyonce is a fan. She's a tired ass army member. <laughs> this is a gag. This is crazy. I mean, like, <laughs> it's saying this shit. Beyonce is a tired ass army member. My baby keeps up more than you guys think. She does. She watches. She's a fan. She's a fan of black young artists. She's a fan of it. She loves it. She makes sure she watches the growth. That makes her happy. And that in turn keeps me motivated to know that someone that is so legendary can still give and not gatekeep. That woman is magic. Beyonce is a magical being. Her team is a magical being. Her parents, Miss Mama Knowles, Mama Tina is a magical being. And I just thank you all for one, supporting me and helping this little boy from Detroit be able to tell this story. It's a full, real, it's a full, full circle moment for me right now. And I want you guys to know I'm going to keep working my ass off because I want to get to a point where I can inspire someone like that. I want to get to the point where I can help someone's career take off. I want to be that for someone else too. And that's all this did for me was to kind of just tell me like, I got to be legendary. <laughs> and that means I have to not gatekeep. I have to be open. I have to collaborate. I have to listen to other black and other artists out there. Yeah, that's what it's about. That's what meeting her really did for me. And keeping calm was because, like I said, while, while meeting her, interacting, touching, hugging, what's, what's going, happening here? Even Julius gave me a fist bump, like, girl, you know me? <laughs> what that means for me is just that everything's possible. Everything's possible. I left Detroit now six years ago, five years ago from and to move to LA. And I never thought this would happen, but it is happening. Even me working with Issa Rae and being on HBO Max, like what her, what her new show and being in those rooms. And I'm so grateful for those people. I'm just, I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful and I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep working my ass off to inspire, to be bigger, to make rooms for more people, more black queer artists like me. I feel, I feel like I'm running for president. <laughs> I'm not running, I feel, I feel like I'm running for president. But that's just my heart right now and that's what this all meant for me. And I know, I don't know when I'm gonna see B again, but I know I'm gonna see you again soon and I would love to really just sit down and pick her brain about this industry and just things that I've learned that I would like to know about shit that she thinks off camera, off behind the scenes, obviously. And um, yeah, I, that's just, that's my life right now. So yes, I met Beyonce and I was on her world tour and I'm Zach Campbell. <laughs> this is me. Any black artist, any black gay boy out there that don't think it's, it's possible, baby, I'm here to tell you, I come from the east side of Detroit, it's very possible. If you get told that you're too much, you're too loud, you don't fit in, why are you like that? That's not cool. Keep doing it. If it makes you happy and it's not hurting anybody and it makes you creative, that means it's working for you. I was told that all my life. And here I am talking to my, one of my biggest, if not the biggest idol of my whole life. And she loves me and loves me the way I am. I love you guys for watching as always. I know this, this is a crazy upload. I'm just so full of gratitude right now.
And I said I wasn't going to completely cry on camera, so I'm just not. <laughs> but I love you so much. And Tired Ass Army, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos, talking with me, making a community. We have a whole community, and Beyonce's a part of it. Like, what? What other YouTube fan base can say that? <laughs> like, oh my God, like what? So let's just keep going. You support me, I support you. And let's just keep going, babes. I will catch you guys for sure in the next one.